Make a list of uh, those in the green in the upper right. I want to talk. This is your cheat sheet. If you can start getting this straight, I know I've written some other things down yesterday in, in, a, in an order, but uh, this kind of for day two, and if you're coming in, you still can easily start to pick this up and take as much as you can from this. Uh, this is where I need you to start being. Okay? Uh, there's more than these. There's things called metallic we're going to talk about. There's things called network and then just covalent. But these are your four major ones. These are the ones that are going to matter. Okay? These are the weakest and these are the strongest. So if you can just keep this in order, and in the beginning you might be like, oh my gosh, there's just four more little things i got to remember. You'll start getting it kind of down as you go. You really will. There's not much to say about ionic. It is what it is. It's the strongest by far. There's not a lot else to say. These other three are all about covalent bonded atoms and the force in between them. But there's more important things to look at and easier things to identify. So first, if you can just remember that both of these, this is what I always tell all my students, is first you've got to just ask yourself, is it polar? Or is it nonpolar? Okay, that that's your first question, and we're going to do a bunch right now. So this will start to show you what the heck we're doing. Um, and then, if it was polar, want to make sure you have some fun with it. And just as a reminder, why is it F, O, and N? It's because F, O, and N are the greatest electronegative elements, and they're the smallest. So they make the strongest dipoles with H. Okay. And you're like, why H? Why not something else? Well, if it was with it, like, francium would have a much lower electronegativity value, because remember the trend is upper right to lower left would have lower. If it was a francium, it would be ionic, because it's a metal. So that it would just it would promote it to ionic right away. So you can't have too great of a dipole. If you have a really strong dipole, it automatically uh, gets promoted because you're not sharing anymore and you get ripped apart. OK, so I have a big list here. I want to show you, like, what if I just ask you? On the test, I'm going to have other things too, like, hey, here's three, here's five, here's four different compounds. List them in order or tell me which one has the greatest vapor pressure or you know, whatever. You need to be able to identify what forces are happening first, and then we'll apply that. So we'll do one, one thing at a time. Tomorrow we're going to apply it to all the forces. So BASO4. This one kind of jumps out. It just does. Uh, that's a metal, right? What is SO4 in general? Like, what is that? Where would you find that? What, what did we label? Like last year, if you were doing this, you would find this where? SO4. Like, on a test. The polyatomic ion. This is... So you're thinking this, right? It's Ba2 plus and SO4 2 minus. I mean, that, that's what's happening. So automatically, oh, that's ionic. That, that's the whole point of this exercise right now. What IMFs are involved? Okay. If I said ionic, then now I know something about it. That's really strong. But what does that mean for different phenomenon? We'll talk about it. I don't know yet, but I know that that's strong. Okay. But sometimes you need to actually know the shapes. That's supposed to be a 2. I don't know what's going on there. It looks like an S. OK, so when you get to a compound like this that's not a metal, so now I have options. What are my options? Is it polar? That's all I care about right now. Is it polar? So here are your choices. Is it this? Or is it this? Now, I'm not making you be an expert if you're like, oh, no, the shapes are coming back. Everything comes back. We don't do anything that's going to waste your time and, and, and it disappears. All of it's needed, which is good and bad. Um, which one does it have to be? Is it linear or bent? And if you're like, well, why is it only linear or bent? It's only two things. So it's either straight across or it's bent down. If it's bent, it has to have lone pairs. So follow some simple truths. My center atom always has to have or hope to have eight, right? I need to have an octet if I can. So which one would it be, linear or bent? Linear. Linear? So if I put, I still need an octet. I need an octet, regardless. What do lone pairs do? Push things down, push things away. So, give me this one. And if you're like, whoa, 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 what? Sulfur has six to begin with. So see those openings right there? 
that, that might that might guide you in that way as well. But just remember, do not get start getting stuck in a, I, I, it's a very valid thought. Oh wait, the top uh, lone pair pushes them down, the bottom one pushes it up. You're thinking in two dimensions. You're thinking in two dimensions. In uh, three dimensions, it would look like a tetrahedral. You pop two of them off and they'd be bent, no matter which two I pop off. Okay, so then it's polar or nonpolar. What is that? Polar, and don't overthink it. Symmetrical or asymmetrical, right? Very symmetrical, asymmetrical. So this is polar. So now it's H bonding or dipole. Well, there's an H. And most of you in the beginning will go too fast and actually write H bonding. Why is this not H bonding? Because you're not having fun with it. it. It's not with H and F, O, or N. So it's not a strong enough dipole. So this would be just classified simply as dipole, dipole. And what does that mean then? Right now, it, all it means is that it's it's not the strongest, it's not the weakest. Like we'll, we'll apply that in a minute. All right, you get to something like this where it just says XE. Again, don't go too far ahead of me. Just kind of write one at a time so you don't uh, bunch this up. It's a noble gas, but more importantly, it's just by itself. There's nothing else there. There's nothing else there. So there's nothing to talk about. It's very nonpolar. It's LD, it's London. You can write London or LD. Not many people choose to write London dispersion force. So it's an LD. All right. Because it's not polar. So this is a better question. Is this polar or nonpolar? We just did this chapter. Ethane, right? Doesn't it look like this? Looks pretty even to me, right? evenly surrounded. There's nothing really going on. So this is LD. Wait, what, what, what? It's nonpolar. It's nonpolar, there's no dipoles. Everything cancels out, so there's not any charge that's on one side or the other. So I tried to throw some different kinds of problems out here. So P4, you could have an S8. There's some different kinds of funky uh, elements that uh, don't follow diatomic rules. What do you think that one is? No matter what I do with it, you don't, you don't even need to know the shape. Hmm? It has to be. You can't pull harder on yourself, right? There's nothing you can do. It, it, it would be bonded to another P no matter how it is. So what I'm just trying to show you, if it's a single element, no matter how many you have of them, if it's N2, it's still LD. Um, and then if it's nonpolar. All right, you get down to the last two here, and then we'll do a couple different exercises. Uh, H2O, I hope I pray. It is on the board right now, but then we would all, this one you just have to know. That's what it looks like, right? Water is important. I mean, that, that's what, if I asked you to do the whole thing, that's what you would be drawing. So it has a big dipole. It's definitely polar. The question is, is it dipole dipole or hydrogen bonding? And what you are looking at is this bond right here, right? That's the bond you're looking at. And that's H to no. Which that's F O and N. So that is hydrogen bond. So that's really strong. It's going to be stickier. It's going to have a stronger IMF. That's going to mean something. So the last one, my favorite, well, it used to be my favorite TV show, CSI. What region, where is that located on the periodic table? What is that? Find family, whatever, anything. Close. You combine two groups there. Alkali. That's an alkaline earth metal is group two. Yay. Yay, people. <laughs> it's a metal. A region, by the way, is metal. That would have been the answer. Regions are metals, nonmetals, uh, metalloids, and noble gases. A uh, group or a family is alkaline metals, alkaline earth metals, halogens, noble gases, all that stuff. It's a metal. If it starts with a metal, then you've got to start thinking, oh, those are just charges. That's ionic. And what I find is a lot of times students with IMFs have a real hard time recognizing. I don't know why, because you guys were really good at this with naming things, but I think it's out of context. It's ionic. So if it starts with a metal, you want to make them extra little note, or it looks like there's a polyatomic ion, then it's ion. So wherever
whatever you have room for, you want to do on the side or below it. We're going to do two exercises here. Let's just do one at a time. On the test already, there would be some legitimate questions that could ask. I could ask you, now we haven't gone into these things yet, like boiling points and freezing points and all that, but I could ask which one has the highest boiling point. Well, I don't know. i got to go in lab. No, I don't. By knowing about IMFs, I can actually predict beforehand, and that's the whole point of this. So, highest boiling point. You would maybe be required to write two sentences on something like this, so usually it's really important to understand what the heck you're talking about. So let's first just talk about the idea of boiling point. What phases are you going? Solid, gas, liquid, wh where are you going from and where are you going to? Let's not make this complicated. We're going from a liquid to a gas, right? Boiling point. And it's that, that, that exact point where that process is happening. We're going from a liquid to a gas. It's supposed to be a cursive L. You know what cursive is anymore. Um, so, highest. This is what my job is. I have to teach you what it means. Like, am I looking for the strongest or the lowest? Where did I put my water? Oh. So, a boiling point, I try to keep something really simple in my mind. A solid really doesn't move, a liquid moves a little bit, and a gas is moving really fast. So, gases have the highest energy and solids have the lowest. So, if I'm trying to boil it, I have to overcome this attractive force that's in there, and then it comes apart. So the stronger the force, the higher or lower temperature will it need to break to, to overcome it. If it's a really strong force, do I need a really high temp or really low temp? You need a really high temp, because temperature will cause these to move faster, and then it'll start to overcome it. Once that kinetic energy is greater than that attractive force, it can leave. Okay? It's just like magnets. If you're moving them fast enough, they won't stick. If you move them slower, they'll come together. So, if I want a higher boiling point, what I'm looking for is the stronger in this case. It's not always going to be the case, but a lot of things, the higher, the stronger. The lower, the weaker. Most of them are like that. You just got to make sure you un understand and recognize the ones that aren't like that. Okay, so let's identify each of these. I'm going to draw something for you. Maybe this makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't. I, I don't feel like I need to do this because they're really simple structures, but Let's identify it. I want to know what is the highest. I want to know just what type of IMF each of these have. So some of them might have the same IMF. Some of them might have different IMFs. So anybody know of any IMFs? So what I'm looking for is this bond. And you're like, well, I don't get the IMF thing. What then we're talking about is this HF will be, bond, will be surrounded by all sorts of other HFs. And then there's this attractive force that we're talking about right here is going to be an attractive force between all these other HFs. I'm not ripping apart my water when I boil it. I'm, I'm tearing one water molecule from another. So, But you got to look within to talk about the force between. So any of them, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, LDs, ionic, those are my choices. Anybody have any thoughts? Hello? Yeah, because you can have fun with it, right? And it's H to one of those. So this is, I'm just going to write that below it. This is an H bond. What's HCl or HBr? It's not ionic because it's not a metal. And it, I, I'm glad. I, I want you to make mistakes on this so we can see, oh, yeah, that wouldn't be like that. I drew something on them. Those are dipoles still. How do you know the dipoles? It's not, this isn't nonpolar. These are different. They're different. They're, they're not symmetrical. They're, they're far apart on the periodic table. So both of these, are both of these dipole-dipole? Why do I know that? Because they're not hydrogen bonding. Maybe that will help you. What you've got to understand is that everything that can draw have a dipole and in overall polarity, they're all dipoles. Just if it's with F, O, or N, it's a super dipole. It's stronger. Oops, I just gave it away. So. Based on my list right here, ionic, H bonding, dipole, dipole, and London, I hope we agree or come to the conclusion, even if we're not quite understanding everything yet, that, okay, wait, I found the different IMFs, and that IMF is the strongest, and I'm looking for the strongest IMF. Ergo, that is the highest boiling point. So it would take the most energy, the highest temperature, to boil uh, HF versus HCl or HBr. Talk about this one. One more. And this is, it looks maybe like a very similar problem, but it's slightly different. It's cool. It's a very different taste to this one. So lowest freezing point. 
So freezing point, I'm going from a, I hope you agree, a liquid to a solid. So I'm trying to drop my temperature, right? So the lowest freezing point, what would that mean? So the lowest freezing point would mean the last one that becomes a solid, right? It, you got it? Like actually, sometimes, some of you are going to get it right away. There are certain problems where you actually have to slow down and go, okay, wait a minute. What does this actually mean? So I found these, and now they're all ruined. They're uh, element uh, Okay, great. These don't. Uh, is it going to have the strongest or the weakest? Like the, the lowest freezing point. Or sorry, will it freeze first or last? I mean, what does it mean? Like, what am I looking for with IMFs? The, the stickiest or the least sticky uh, IMF? Um, the least sticky? I have to lower the temperature so much that it'll eventually, like, literally stop moving, and then that force will click. Well, well, why wouldn't it click? Well, what if there's a little kinetic energy and it's actually stronger than this really weak magnet? Now, if I had some of these other magnets that we used uh, last year when you pulled off that, uh, or two years ago, but the big uh, cylinder and you had to pull off that magnet, it fell in and then it bubbled up into this big cylinder. Uh, and I, you can put one magnet on one side of your hand and the other and it, it'll hold. That, if I went this slow, it would snap immediately. It can break your skin. Um, those are really strong magnets, so you don't need uh, to go so slow, you don't need to slow them down. So I want the lowest. I want the smallest IMF. So tell me about these. Neon, argon, and krypton. They're all what? And it's just on the table. The noble, gases. the noble gases. They're all by themselves. There's nothing there. So these are all LDs. Uh, oh, shoot, we should have said, which one is the strongest of these two dipole dipoles, by the way? Why? Good word. Electronegative difference, a greater electronegativity difference, yes. CL is closer to the upper right. If you had values, you could say it right away. But if you don't, remember, the atom closer to the upper right. So CL is closer to the upper right than BR. So CL would have a greater electronegativity value, which would make this a greater difference of these two versus these two. So this is a stronger dipole of, of these two. So this would be second if you had to rank them. And this would be third. This is number one. Okay, just so they know. So here, you get to this, you're like, uh, they're all LDs. What do I do? What do I do? What do we do? What did we learn about, um, we just did it, um, right here. The larger the cloud, the stronger the LD. Okay. So this will come up, I promise. This will be on your test for, because it comes up in May all the time as well. So in this case, because I want the shortest one, the smallest, I'm looking for the smallest electron cloud. That's what you're looking for. When you're looking for, and I'll, I'll link it to LD. So looking at that, it's not a big leap. It's neon, right? Because as you move down the table, it gets bigger. So this is the smallest. So just remember, the larger the cloud, the stronger the IMF. The smaller the cloud, the, the weaker the IMF for LDs. OK, so that's just some exercises that we could do. I have one more little thing to show you, and we're going to do some homework problems, and then we're done. So last thing, network solid. Find somewhere to write this. Um, and I'm sorry for this. Network solid is going to confuse you a little bit. But I want you to realize that this is not the most important part of all this is uh, the IMFs that we're talking about, uh, the hydrogen bonding, the dipole-dipole, the uh, London. That's the meat and potatoes, if you will. Uh, so what it is, it's a network solid occurs if a repeating network exists. And usually it's with carbon and silicone. The reason why it's carbon and silicone is carbon and silicone can make four bonds all the time. So it can make the most bonds, so it can make more of a network. A network has to have multiple branches coming off of it, or else it's not called a network. These are really strong. 
diamond is a network solid. It just repeats carbon over and over and over again. It never stops. There's no beginning or end. It's not like nice and tidy. I'm gonna move up for a second, I'm sorry. This is a good example if you're writing, just look up, see how this, if this was all written out, and you had all the H's right here, because you're gonna be like, wait, if it has C, then it's automatically a network solid. This is closed off, right? I can't write anything more, right? I mean, it's done. It's not like, oh, it can go forever. That's completely closed off. So that is not considered a network solid. It's when silicone or carbon just kind of repeats itself. Graphite, although you could think, oh, graphite's not strong. It's on my pencil, it crumbles off. Graphite is like a deck of playing cards. And it's a plane of carbon atoms, and another one's on top, and another one's on top. And you can flip off the playing cards really fast, but that card itself is really strong. Just the bonds and the attractive force between one card and another are just really weak and can break really easily, and that's why it slides off nicely. Uh, but graphite is an example because it's just a continual uh, network of carbon. Okay, so uh, we're gonna apply this right now. If you have your worksheet, hopefully you picked one up. If you didn't, go get one. Uh, and we're gonna do some problems. I'm gonna show you how you're kind of thinking about and what you should be thinking about. Uh, I'm gonna make this do Friday, not Thursday. So please make that change. Uh, there were less people here yesterday than I thought. I want to make sure that I give enough time. So here are all my categories. All right. Now, you don't need to do this necessarily unless you want to make kind of a line, but this is more for me, is that these are kind of on them by themselves. This is that London, the dipole, dipole, the hydrogen, and then you got metallic, ionic, and network. Now, we haven't talked about metallic, but once I show you how this works, you'll be like, oh, we'll talk about it. Metals are awesome. Metals are really unique. The reason why you can bend a metal and it doesn't just snap, the reason why metals can conduct electricity and, and heat, it's all because of its electrons and how the clouds are formulated, and, and we'll talk about that. But um, if you have to do any work, expect little drawings and little uh, hand scratching kind of all in columns on the bottom, in the middle, wherever you want to put it. I didn't give you a lot of room there, but there's space, okay? So here we go. First. On the right side here, if it doesn't have just carbon or just silicone or something kind of funky, it's not a network solid. I'll show you what one of those looks like soon. If it doesn't start with a metal or looks like an ionic compound, then that's gone. And if it's not just a single metal, then nothing else. So most of them are going to be here, just to make sure you understand that. It's going to usually be London dipole, dipole, or hydrogen. So the first question you have to ask yourself, as I said before, is it polar? or non-polar, okay? So I get to something like this. If it ever starts with a non-metal, you're automatically on this side. Non-metals are all about these first three. It starts with a non-metal. So I have to ask myself, is this polar or non-polar? The better you are at some of this stuff in molecular geometry, the stronger you're gonna be. What you can do for yourself, though, think about the center atom. What's that center atom doing? Well, it has five, does it not? It's five? That's where I can go. That's where I can live all the time. Like, How many does it have? Well, why is that important? Because, oh, there's three here. So those three would just be my H's. So because it has a lone pair, it is polar and non-polar. Polar. Polar. Right? Almost everything with lone pairs, almost everything with lone pairs are polar. So if you have to guess, it would probably be polar. So now you're a dipole, dipole, or hydrogen. So now you just got to ask yourself, is there a hydrogen bond there or not? There is, because H to N, right, have fond with H bonding. So this is a hydrogen bond. And right now, all we're doing is applying, attaching IMFs to compounds. Later, we'll actually put some meaning like we just did with melting points and all that stuff. Okay, I get the krypton. It's just Kr. There's nothing there. There's nothing else. It's not a metal, so I don't ch uh, click metallic. So this has to be LD. Well, why can't it be something else? I, I can't put a dipole. What's, what's, who's pulling on what? Nothing's pulling on anything. It's just crypto. All right. We just did this one before. What's HCl? Yeah, it's a dipole, dipole. Well, how did you know? What, why isn't that nonpolar? They're two different atoms. So it's not nonpolar. It's got to be completely symmetrical to be nonpolar. Hmm. Like number four. If you look at this, this is what it would look like. It'd be F bonded to F. You can't pull harder than F. F can't pull harder than F. So there's no difference in one side or the other. So this is a 
and L D That's a London. By the way, again, it's L D because of London dispersion. It's not L D because London, London. Okay? Just want to make sure that's what starts happening. Not that that really changes anything, but I just want to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, all right, then you get to number five. And it starts throwing people off again. And there's two ways you can figure this out. Any thoughts? Two things that give me huge clues. Ellen? Okay, that's one clue. You're right, it's ionic. It's polyatomic ion. So if that jumps out to you, go, oh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was a polyatomic ion. Or that, yeah, that looked like a polyatomic ion. Done, polyatomic ion. So it is ionic. I don't know what column that is. What is that one? Second to last? I'll just write ionic. The right one. Uh, what's the other clue? What's this guy? Metal. It's a metal. It starts with a metal. Okay? Either one. All right, let's do some more, though. So I got a bunch. I got five more. I think no one will complain. Okay, SI. If it's just carbons or just silicones or a combination of the two, you are going to mark off. Let me just do these again. What is it? This is London, right? This is dipole. This is H. This is metallic. I do that in order? Is that right? Okay. What, what is that going to be, do you think? Just silicone. It's going to be a network. Yes. If it's just carbon, just silicone, or a compound that has carbon and silicone, Usually, if it's like, well, how did I know about that one? <coughs> then it will give you an extra clue, maybe, or it, it'll, it'll hint you that way. You will get a little confused with networks. I'm going to sacrifice that, and, and I guess you, I'm asking you to trust in me on that uh, for the greater good of the stuff that really is important, because network solids will only come up to an idea of, like, well, it's really strong, and it continues to repeat. And they usually give you a pretty big clue on it. Uh, or We'll, we'll recognize a few more as we go. All right, I see just AG. So you could think, oh, that's London. But then you start thinking about what that actually is. And AG is a metal. Now, we haven't gone over it yet again, but we will by the end of the week. Metals are special. When it's just a metal, their electrons flow in such a way, we call it a sea of electrons, that they allow a lot of special properties. Most things, when you bend something, it snaps and it breaks immediately. Like if this was made out of metal, I could probably, if I could, I could bend it. But if this isn't, right now, if I did that same thing, this would snap. So metals have a real special quality to them, and it's all because of their electrons. Okay, then you get to some compounds again that you, if you don't know, if it starts with a non-metal and you have multiple things, you have to think polar or non-polar. So you're going to have to think about shape. Again, this could be this, or this could be this. Now, it could be more complicated than this, but this is probably the guess. Okay? You have to think about it. Where I would start, think about what my center atom looks like before I bond anything. So first or second one. If it was the first, that would be a London. Why? Because that would be completely even. Right? It'd be nonpolar. But it is the second one. And I, I, I don't know how else to say it, so I'm hoping that you're hearing me. The center atom is where I start. Just think about that center atom. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense here, here, here. Oh, yeah. Lone pairs push things down. So it's polar. So now you got to just make sure that you pull the right trigger here. And this one's not nearly as hard as the first one I actually did. Is this dipole or London? I mean, or H bonding. So dipole or H bonding? Dipole. There's no, there's no hydrogen at all. So if you say H bonding, you're, you're, not, you're probably just making a mistake or you're not thinking about it. That first one, that has, at least you got to process that, and I know it ended up being H bonding, but sometimes it's H with something that's not. For example, if this was pH3, would that be H bonding? Still would be London. Okay. Then you get to 27. Again, I expect that in the spaces, sometimes you're doing just random work. It doesn't have to be anywhere lined up. You're going to, now you could get lucky. Once in a while, this is very rare, you got to kind of bite the bullet and really do a full on molecular geometry problem. Because if you're like, well, oh yeah, it's tetrahedral. If you're just assuming that's a tetrahedral, you, like, this is large, this is a big atom. It's in the fifth row. Anything after the third row, you can have more than four clouds, right? So this is what I would do. This is what, literally, I would do. This is the most work I would be showing. Now, I probably wouldn't write the numbers, tell you the truth, but, so you can see what the heck I'm doing. This would be four times 
8, so that would be 32. This is 28, 7 times 4, plus another 8, 36. And then what I would just do is I would just add them, and then I would, I, I'm not asking you to draw a shape. If you need to draw, that's fine. Anybody, do you know what that shape is without drawing it right now? What is that shape? I know, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Square planar. Yeah, that, you're right. That's what it was. It's this, right? And then the lone pair is here and here. So, why am I doing all that work? All to answer one question. Polar and nonpolar. That's it. Nonpolar. Now, if you don't know, you could still make yourself sound like you know what you're talking about. Take a shot. It is, well, okay, so first off, it's nonpolar, so what is it? London, uh, dipole, dipolar, hydrogen. It's London, okay? Now, if it, were Lund if it were polar, it would be considered a dipole, dipole, right? So if you thought it was polar, it would be like, uh, XEF is polar, so it would be dipole, dipole. Or XEF is nonpolar, so it's, it would be London. But if you don't know the shape, don't start making up shapes. Like, you could, you could get out of that. Don't, don't be all silly. Be like, oh, it's, it's not polar because it's a tetrahedral. And, and if you're not 100% on that, don't say the shape. If you know it, say it. It only can help. But if you don't know it, don't do that. Because then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, they don't even know what they're talking about. They got lucky. The last one. I threw this one in here because I think it actually could confuse you. 54. <coughs> London, dipole, H-bonding, metallic, uh, ionic, or network. There's one big clue. Starts with a, a metal. Starts with a metal, so this is where that all comes from, people. So that is ionic, right? It's ionic. Where am I headed at? Okay. You're going to struggle on a few. Uh, I get it. Once I get it in there, and I'm sorry, I, I may not right away, but the answer key will just have X's on them. If you just copy it down, that's, you, if you don't get one, you need to, if you look, great, but then process, and process why that's not working. Uh, those of you that weren't here yesterday, starting now, all um, uh, Canvas uh, assignments, I'm gonna post at the beginning of all chapters, and you have the option to submit it instead of hand it in. So if you want to do it on Notability or you upload the file from the website and write right on the worksheet and then upload it in, that is a definite choice that you have and an option that you have. So um, I just had to actually open up the uh, submission button for them. Otherwise, I wasn't doing it because I was just having to hand them in. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. On ones that I'm giving you an option. So. Anyway, give it a shot. Uh, we will talk more about it and apply things. Uh, on in class tomorrow from our group. And we'll go over our uh, organic chemistry test as well, which the average is like an 84%. Okay, terrific. If you weren't here yesterday and you want to watch the video, I will get those posted later today. I won't right away because I have a uh, large group, but I will.